Hello everybody. Oh, I'm so excited to be here on this call with you again. As many of you know, I did my very first webinar for health coaches this time last month and it was so well received. I am so grateful for all the emails and um, feedback that I've had from that and so many people were asking me to elaborate more into uh, many areas of um, the business that's needed in the health coaching industry and the one particular topic that was coming up more and more again was how to get clients. So it's my absolute pleasure to be here to, today for you uh, to dive deeper into this topic of exactly how you get clients. So, you know, to start off, the health coaching industry is such a powerful and important industry and it plays such an important role in improving people's lives and this is the same for for all of the healing um, modalities, to be honest. It is also important that health coaches and healers are adequately supported and that includes financially. And I don't think that any of us, I talked about this last time, got into health coaching or healing to become like multi-millionaires and you know, many of us actually got into this initially to heal our own health issue or definitely to become of service to others. Um, and if there's one thing that I've learned with great certainty is that to be healthy physically, it also means to be healthy financially. And this starts with getting clients. There really is no point in hiding our very you know, special skills in this way behind the scenes where nobody can know about them. And if we're not getting clients, we're going to get burnt out, frustrated and annoyed and doubt what that special gift is you know, that we've got for the world. So today I'm very excited and proud to present the, com uh, the content of this new webinar. It's brand new content um, for you today and you know it's going to be five client magnet methods that I use and my clients use and fellow entrepreneurs, health coaches, etc. all have used to get to that you know, 5k and beyond consistently a month. And we talked a lot about the support and the certainty that comes in last month when you can get clients coming consistently so that it's not like the sporadic freak out kind of at the beginning of each month like oh, now how am I going to get my next client or I got one and you know but now how do I get the next so we're going to go into all the detail of that today and I trust that you'll find it very useful it's like I said all the things that I've done for myself all the things that my clients ask me all the time and I've really just pulled together the best of the best the things that work uh, so also to let you know, I'm so grateful for all of the emails of everybody who's been asking, you know, about working with me one on one or how this even applies specifically to your business, etc. So I'll take time at the end of our call to discuss, um, you know, all of that with you. Any questions at all, I'm going to open up for Q&A at the end and that's regardless of, you know, whether you want to work with me one on one. This call is here for you today. It's here for everybody. and. Any questions around getting clients or getting to that first, you know, 5K month or consistent months, I'm going to, you know, stay on the line at the end and answer all those questions for you. That will be available in the chat box. Anything, you can start putting questions in the chat box at any time. Um, I'm going to try not to <laughs> watch it so much today because last time I just wanted to help you all and I, I got a bit distracted. So I'm going to try and... Um, you know, not monitor that so much. Joanna, my assistant, is on there for you the whole time if you need any support uh, during the webinar. But other than that, I'm just really going to dive in, you know, to the content for you. So, yeah, at the end, time for questions, time to discuss you working with me one on one if that's something that you've got on the call for today. So, let's talk about. Look, for those of you who don't know me, and I, I should share, my name is Amanda Daly. I now work as a business coach for health coaches and solopreneurs. And this path has come about, I actually worked for 15 years in online advertising and marketing. I worked for the likes of, um, well, I worked in big ad agencies worldwide for the likes of Coca-Cola, Microsoft, um, eBay, Telstra, you know, the main telco here in Australia, television stations, um, the whole gamut. I've seen it from that side, I've seen how brands work, I see how advertising get messages out to the world. Of course, uh, through my health journey, I turned my back on that and thought um, that was the devil <laughs> and didn't want anything to do with it for a long time and through my own health journey, became much more passionate, trained to be a health coach, set up my own health coaching business, Fuel Urban Wellness 
and I was working with corporate burnt out women, uh, who of course I had been, and very quickly managed to get my health coaching business off the ground, making great money, well within 12 months. And it took me a while to realize that it was my advertising background, it was my understanding of how to connect with people, how to get a message across, etc., that had had, um, or at least made that journey quite so easy for me. So more and more, if my clients were actually coming to me and asking for business advice, most of my clients by the middle of last year were actually up and coming health coaches who wanted to work with me to support their health further. And then we went on to business and I just loved it so much. And it was really a, a journey for myself to make peace with that advertising past and realize I have all that background and those skills. Who am I to hold that back and not share that with people such as yourself who have these healing messages and this change in the world but just don't know how to get it out there. And it's the same in your businesses, really. Who are you to hold back from getting what you've got out to the people who need it? And we're going to talk much more around that today, um, the importance of embracing a business model and embracing being able to sell, being able to market, etc. So. You know, when I think back when I first started working as a health coach, I was very excited, like, you know, out of my health coaching course, full of optimism, in love. I'd been in love with, you know, health and well-being for as long as I can remember. I really wanted to be a naturopath and I didn't want to study science and go to university for all that long, so that's why that didn't happen all those years ago. And I wanted to be creative and, you know, that's why I got into advertising and art direction. So here I was in you know, the health coaching course and finally following all the health and it's such an uplifting course. I was you know, full of optimism and I got out there and I actually left my advertising job um, while I was still studying. I didn't really plan that but what I found is instead of looking for a new job, I just wanted to blog and just wanted to talk about health and you know, I set up my blog quickly and my business quickly. And then all of a sudden I was ready to take on clients and I thought that people, because I had been working so hard behind the scenes, would just instantly like, I don't know, stumble across my website, hit work with me, you know, see I had a program, hit the buy button and, you know, like clients were going to fall in my lap. And it was anything but that, um, you know, very, very hard reality check, I guess, when that didn't happen, even after a few months of, you know, so much work behind the scenes and so much passion and really there was nothing, you know, nothing coming back and my hopes of this like new freedom lifestyle were flattened pretty quickly like yeah okay I was, I was living out at, um, actually I wasn't living at Bondi by then, I was still living in the city and I was about to travel um, around America for a while so that was about the time when I started looking out um, for clients, I was actually living in LA and all of a sudden, um, I started looking like online and I was hearing like fellow graduates also starting to moan of the same thing and I think that we're all uh, mature enough to know that who you surround yourself with what you see can very quickly infiltrate you know, your own mindset and I started believing too that getting clients was hard, um, you know, that maybe we'd been sold something that wasn't possible, like, um, I don't know, all these kind of rubbish beliefs really. But I was in victim mode because I didn't know how to get clients and I had done absolutely everything I knew. For me, however, making a career as a coach was absolutely non-negotiable. I had had like dreams and visions of being what I called at that time a lifestyle coach for probably 10 years before anything such as health coaching or anything came along. So you can imagine when I found this course that it was like, oh my gosh, like that's what I've been dreaming about. So all of a sudden, just because I wasn't getting clients, this was a few months in by this stage, um, it was non-negotiable for me. I was going to make it work no matter, no matter what. Um, and I knew that I was meant to be of great support for other women in this way. I had a message, message to share and I was like giving up wasn't an option for me really. So I went on a mission to learn from the best and look in some ways I knew a lot of people who were doing well in the health coaching industry and at the same time there was a certain, you know, there's the, the blogging world and there's um, kind of people can become celebrities in quick ways and, and things like that and all of that um, of course I observed and, and learnt things from but what I learned is that I wanted to create a business model, like I had my business background and I wanted something sustainable and that just felt right for me and every time I went to try to do one of those different options, it just never felt right. So what I did was look for the people in the world who 
kind of that I felt aligned with and were had successful coaching businesses in the way that I wanted. And the couple of people that I approached were not business coaches by any means. They were just people who I really admired. And I put up my hand and said, can you mentor me? And you know what? The answers came back like no, no, or no answers. And, and funny enough, um, especially one in particular, only a month or two later, later opened that up as an offering. Uh, and I got a spot. So I've gone on from there. And so I mentored with coaches who I knew were aligned with the way I wanted to be doing business and who had done it. Like people were doing it, right? We know this. Um, and I learned from her. And then I went on because I knew that there was this online business bit. I went on and did, like, first of all, I did um, like online, you know, like B school, online marketing kind of basics. But I knew there was much more than that from my days in advertising. And I went on to study uh, with coaches who could teach me like really advanced online business skills. And at the same time, I was like, I knew that going into that wasn't necessarily my way either. Like some of it's a bit salesy or a bit like heavy. And I, in some ways, I sucked that up. Like I paid quite a lot of money and it wasn't necessarily aligned with me, but I knew that I needed those skills to then integrate them back into what I knew was true for me and to create, you know, I needed all these different skills to create something that was authentic for me to build my business. Um, Along the way, I learned so much as well about mindset, and you know there really is no lack of clients in the world. I mean, listen to ourselves. We say there's no clients, or I can't get clients. I mean, get into reality. There are millions of people in the world who are suffering with their health, or suffering with their um, mindset, or depression, or whatever it is, and like there's simply no lack. The lack is in them seeing your offer and believing and knowing that it's right for them. Um, and do you know what? There's not only no lack of clients, there's no lack of dream clients. And you know, you heard that right. I've learned this so much now. You can be picky. In fact, you only want dream clients. You know, um, maybe it can sound easy for me to say now like that I'm a lot busier, but I will only work with people that light me up because that's the point. I want a job that I jump out of bed, you know, to do every day that excites me. And I've learned just how much we all know that like our friends and family or even colleagues affect our energy. So do our clients. There is no lack of dream clients. You've just got to know how to connect with them. Uh, don't get me wrong. I remember thinking that I should take any clients, uh, especially when I was starting out. Um, I was terrified to choose like one area or one niche because I thought maybe I was making it harder on myself. But ultimately what drove me is, like I said, that passion. I knew that I had to stick to my truth, but I also knew that there were skills that were missing, and I went out and got them. Um, I invested, I invested my time, my money, my energy, and I went out and learned everything that I could. And once these pieces fell into place, clients didn't just start um, coming, like clients were coming fast. And that was not, like I'm actually all, for those of you who don't know me, like I'm very, struggle with the words for this like I have strong spiritual beliefs I guess is what I'm trying to say and while I believe it's 90% of our own energy our own beliefs um, etc which will create our reality there's no amount of meditating eight hours a day that's going to have clients drop in your lap you've got to meet the universe halfway and you've got to learn the tangible skills of basically how to go out and get them so you know, what else do I want to share with you until I go into the five steps? Um, you know, like I said, just getting clients here and there. What I was really looking for was a solid plan. You know, I started learning at this stage, like clients were coming hard and fast, then they'd be gone. And I was, I think I shared that last time. I was alternating between like a, a 1K month, a 16K month, a which actually was mainly from affiliates, for those of you who asked me last week. Um, then it was kind of like 3K, 4K, 3K, 5K, 7K, 5K, you know, like this was my kind of experience. And even though it was exciting that clients were coming, I started also getting quite frustrated at the unknown and I was looking for more of a formula. And so I'd learned all these different tools and so I started learning how to bring that together and something that is actually very supportive and knowing each month this is where my clients were coming from, these are the steps I need to take. And the more I immersed myself deeply into that, along with the mentoring that I was getting along the way, um, you know, slowly but surely, and I say slowly, I could certainly, um, <laughs> for so many people now, do that in a flash. But you know, I learned the hard way in some ways, 
And um, getting clients really is no longer hard, whether that's in the health coaching side or now if I'm offering business as well. And I've started teaching this formula to my clients in the one-on-one, -on -one, you know, private program. And the results are just so exciting that everyone's getting because this is my passion. They're really, you didn't come into healing or health coaching to be a business person and you shouldn't have to go on the journey, luckily I quite enjoyed it, but you shouldn't have to go on the journey of investing in 10, 20 different business programs to learn how to get your message out there. But um, the reality is without some of this, it's going to be very hard to get clients. So I hope that going through my steps today is going to at least introduce you to how it can be quite easy and some things that um, hopefully you haven't already tried for yourself. So um, let me just check. There's nothing else that I kind of wanted to cover and then we'll dive into the five steps that I've pulled together for you. No, I think ultimately, you know, I just wanted to let you all know, like, I've been there. Look, I spent... Honestly, like I did all this in my business within 12 months, um, but honestly the first three, four months, there's times where I literally spent days lying on the couch staring at the roof saying I would do anything to help women with this and this knowledge that I have, but I have no idea how. And that was so frustrating and in hindsight, I want to say almost selfish, like I know that's a little bit extreme. But why was I wasting my time and energy on the couch when I could be out there helping others? The truth is, and why was I not um, receiving money for the knowledge that I had and the skills I had when I could be out there receiving it? It's all because I didn't know how, purely. So that's why I really wanted to, and especially after talking to so many of you over the uh, you know, last few weeks, I really wanted to go into some simple steps on you know, how to actually get clients and how I've done it and how my clients do it. So I said five steps, I've got six. <laughs> the first one's kind of a pre-step and the first step is actually a recap from last week and I just need to say like knowing your target market inside out is key. Without a target market you have no business and you know without it's not like you have to know that like straight off or you're a bad person. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it takes time and that deep work of getting honest about who you are, uh, what you want your business to be and who you're really meant to serve. When you fall in love with your target market, which is literally what my experience was, literally what my clients report to me all the time, when you get what I call that magnet, when you realize this is me, this is my client and it's like bang, it's like falling in love. And that's the experience you need first. You need to care about who you're talking about so much that you take the time to invest in them, you take the time to learn about them, you get into their mindset and you you just care about them. That's like the words I've got. You know, you've got to care. If you don't care about them, you're in the wrong business or you're in the wrong target market. Basically, if you don't choose someone to speak to, you're speaking to no one. And this is the biggest mistake. I mentioned it last week and it's not so much part of the five steps. It's like a pre-step. But honestly, I'll say that again. If you're not speaking to someone, pretty much one person, you're speaking to no one. And you need to be there for someone to absolutely turn up and go, oh my gosh, she's talking to me. Without that, it's going to be very hard to do any of the following steps. So, um, you know, to let you know, if anyone needs to talk to me about that piece, uh, I would say actually most people need to do the work on that piece. It's the biggest piece. Um, you know, you can always flick me an email and, and talk about that. But the actual five steps, once you know who you're talking to. And let me just take a quick sip of tea. i got to stop looking at the chat box. I want to answer everyone's questions now. <laughs> um, I had it covered for a minute there. <laughs> All right. Um, step number one. Show up where they are and be seen as an expert. Now, show up where they are. There's no way you can show up where they are if you don't know who they are or if you don't care enough. And I mean that, you know, um, lightheartedly. Like, you've got to know where they are. There's no point saying, um, I work with burnt out corporate women like I did and then turning around and saying, I don't know where to find them. 
Find out where they are. Care enough. You know, get on the phone and, and talk to burnt out corporate women. And, you know, um, get out there and ask them, like, what magazines are you reading? What are you doing to try to get out of your stress? I mean, I'm using, you know, that one as an example. And, um, yeah, sorry. I need to cover the chat box. <laughs> sorry. All right. <laughs> I'm so easily distracted when I, I want to help everyone. Um, so showing up where they are. First of all, knowing where they are. So here's the examples at this level. We all know that Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, you know, that can be a blanket thing. But if you're just getting out, say, on your page, um, is that where corporate women are already hanging out, if we're using corporate women? Or are they actually hanging out on a yoga studio page? Because that's where they're going. You know, what is it that they're following? Are they actually, the corporate women, for example, are probably on LinkedIn, not Facebook, because that's where they really value their career, that's where they're making their connections, possibly that's where they're looking for their next job because they're stressed out. Getting in their mindset and not just guessing, but getting out there, interviewing them, talking to them, etc. Find out where they are and what they want. Like, without that, how can you be of service to them? So the first step when I say show up where they are, not to show up where they are, but see, be seen as an expert. This isn't about you going into their groups, their LinkedIn, etc., and selling like, you know, I've got a six-week program for you, etc. This is about building genuine community and camaraderie shit, like building friendships with these people. Um, offering nurturing and expert advice when relevant. Um, it's coming back to this caring place. Like, if you know that these women are stressed out and you understand what they're really going through, you understand that, say, 2 o'clock is really that hard time for them where their energy's dipped because they've got adrenal fatigue and they want the sugar and all those kind of things. Um, statistically, and I've checked this with one of my mates um, from the agency world recently and it's now official apparently in some report, uh, like 3, 4 p.m., Facebook spikes. And that's because everyone crashes and is like struggling to get through the day and they're looking for that hit. For example, then you show up. Where are they going at that time? Get out and ask them. And when you get there, caring, offering, nurturing advice, expert advice, not pushing things on them but being seen as an expert, people are going to start to talk to you. You can ask them questions. Get in their mindset. It's a place to network at that level. The second step is create opportunities for them to come see you in person and to see you as that expert. Um, this is what I kind of work with clients on, speeding up the know, like, and trust factor. So know, knowing someone, liking them, and trusting them are three essential things for someone to work with you. And it's very, very rare that someone will stumble across your site magically on the internet see the work with me button, read a program and hit buy now. It's very, very rare. And what my experience was in the first year, well, even less than that really of my business, before I got the marketing online things really down pat, was that all my clients came when they met me in person. And, you know, we can put all our heart and soul into our blogs and feel like we're sharing with the world and we can feel vulnerable. But really, other people don't get that. They just stumble across, they read a blog, they're off again. You've probably put your Facebook page on your homepage so they've clicked back to Facebook. Um, all of those kind of things. Actively going out there and creating these opportunities for yourself for them to see you as the expert. Um, where I got my clients from mostly in the first year or the first six months were I held my own workshop. In fact, it was a, the first one was a healthy high tea. So I hosted that myself. Um, I knew how to promote it. Uh, which we'll talk about in a second, and I got, you know, 35 women came along for a fun afternoon where I also spoke to them about health. Then I could tell them about my program at the end because they'd spent a whole afternoon, the know, like, and trust factor, and when people see you talk in person, they get, oh, you're a real person. Oh, you get this. You were in the corporate world, which was my experience. Um, and they trust you and they get basically what they're doing is finding out if they are aligned with your beliefs, your values, and just who you are. Not every coach is for every person. It's why there's no competition in my mind at all. Everybody is meant to hear something from someone different. And if they're attracted in the first place to your workshop, um, or your event, or your speaking, whatever you're doing, 
Um, video kind of comes into this as well. I'll touch on it in a second. Then this is where I was getting my clients. You know, people would come up to me after and say, how can I work with you? I loved your talk today. Part of that, if we go back to the step one, which was showing up as being an expert, some of my speaking opportunities in that first six months came from me being seen, seen as an expert in Facebook groups, LinkedIn groups, and people then saying to me, oh, you're um, a health coach, aren't you? Would you like to come speak at this event? Um, other ways that I created opportunities, putting up my hand to speak at events. Uh, again, where are my clients hanging out? They were burnt out corporate women. They, I didn't want people who weren't interested in health. That wouldn't be fun for me. I was looking for you know, specific mindsets of my ideal client, someone who's interested in wanting to learn more. I found that these women were often hanging out in yoga studios or Pilates studios. So I, um, I actually got approached by some Pilates studios, but I also approached some yoga studios myself and did workshops there or little talks. These people love to have experts come in for free and do a talk. And for you, it's basically like a live audience of people who are keen. But you've got to know that wouldn't work for everybody. You've got to know where you're tribe is, where your ideal clients are, and turn up there as the expert. Um, so all of those in-person things, those are the, while you're building your online um, business, which I could now do a lot quicker, obviously, um, but that was really good to start with. And a lot of my clients have found that through holding food workshops or speaking events, even like at chiropractor's offices or things like that, have been places where they've picked up clients quite quickly. So um, the next part of that, it's still step two, but video also comes in, you know, in that know, like, and trust factor. If you really, for some reason, can't hold a workshop or an event, then look at maybe doing some things online. Or uh, last year I did quite a few joint webinars with people. So joining up with like-minded people, it's getting together on a video like this. Um, actually, we didn't do ours on video last year, but I would recommend it now. It's so much easier. And people can connect with you you know, so much more, no like and trust factor. So that was step one was show up where they are and be seen as an expert, mainly online. Step two was create the opportunities yourself for them to come see you as an expert in person. Step three, once people come to your website, you need to capture their leads. This is pretty much business 101, and I almost left it out of this presentation, and then I realized how many clients actually don't know this, especially straight out of um, you know, whatever course you might have done or energy course, etc. The only way you can nurture people who are genuinely interested is to first capture them, and that word capture can sound so like um, evil or something, but you're doing a disservice to people if you've got something to help them if you don't let them know that and you don't capture them as such to keep nurturing them. So um, getting a killer opt-in is a big different than just putting something up for free. By opt-in I mean it's something when they come to your website that you're offering for free that they're going to give you their name and email for um, in return. And there's a big difference in people who are just putting up like a free, I don't know, ebook or whatever it is and people who have done the work to really know what their target market wants and would do anything for to give their name and email address. It needs to be a no-brainer. And basically what I work with my clients on saying is you've got to beat Google. You know, if your client is lying awake at 2 a.m., something's stressing her and she gets on Google and all the internet and starts searching, she's probably going to find the answers she's looking for. What is it that when she comes to your site that you've done your research so well into knowing what she wants, what she needs, what she wouldn't be able to find anywhere else because you've done the research to create a unique solution, that when she sees this, she's like, oh my gosh, put my email address and give that to me now because I want to hear everything you've got to say. There's a huge difference in that and just putting something, you know, for free. I can't even think what most people do, but you know, like a free recipe or something like that. Nobody's in pain to get a free recipe. Some people would like it, but not when you're getting into the psychology of what's really going to actually heal someone. What's going to heal someone is you first taking that step as an expert to show them that you get them, that you've taken the time, that you care enough, and that you understand this pain that they haven't been able to solve for themselves. They can Google how to make a green smoothie. 
they can Google how to eat more greens. Everybody knows they need to exercise more. What is it that you get of the pain that they're in that they haven't been able to work out for themselves and then a generic Google search can't do? And that also extends into, it's not just your opt-in, uh, what I work with my clients on is also creating your unique programs and packages that answer their pain points. Um, and this is why I covered the chat before because I get excited looking at everyone's comments. I did see someone has already asked, like, you know, do I use the standard 12-step um, maybe program that I learned when I was studying, etc. Initially, yes, I did. Most of my clients, we change that very quickly. Not everyone, but most clients. Because in my mind, when we do this deeper work to make you an expert in a field, it's unlikely that that 12-step plan, depending on where you studied, would answer that pain point. And to be honest, most of you know better. Most of you, when I work with you, say, oh, well, I'm teaching this 12 steps, but really I believe that it's the mindset and the beliefs and the energy or whatever your variation of that is. And this is where it becomes incongruent if you believe one thing and you're teaching another just because you were taught that. So, um, you know, I love to support people professionally to go through and craft not just that opt-in but also their programs. Um, yeah, program, I mean content and structure. Like, does your client actually need a full day with you? Or do they need one day a week for a whole year? There's so many different variations and one blanket approach does not work for every client. And if you're just putting out, um, as an example there, if you're marketing, I'm a health coach, I can guarantee nobody is looking for a health coach. Um, not guarantee, some people might be. It tends to be, and I've spent a lot of time now um, in this, it tends to be the only people Googling health coaches are fellow health coaches. And because people don't know what it is, maybe, um, I could be wrong, I think America the term has picked up a little bit more. Here in Australia, it's still like people like health coach, what's that? When you get out of the bubble, and we all get stuck in this bubble because we're so excited about it, and it feels like everybody else is a health coach, but genuinely, there's millions of people out there who need our help as a health coach, but they don't know what that term means. We need to show them. We need to actually turn up with our solution, um, which is not a blanket thing that we can Google. I could talk on that topic forever. <laughs> but, okay, step one, show up where they are, be seen as an expert. Step two, create opportunities for them to see you in person as the expert to know, like, and trust you. Step three, capture their name and their lead when they get to the website with a smart opt-in so that you can nurture them like crazy and really support them whether or not they work with you. Step four, learn to market. Learning to market so that all of these things that we're talking about can actually put th people through a funnel that will nurture them to eventually buy your program because that is what they need. That's not manipulation. That is you taking care of them and understanding their emotions through that process of a marketing funnel so that you are delivering what they need at the right time when they're comfortable to purchase from you. Uh, it's not about being pushy, but equally it's not about hiding because if you hide, you're only hiding a solution to someone's pain point and really that's quite selfish in my perspective. So learning to promote things that we talked about before. We can promote this opt-in. We can promote your workshops. We can promote your speaking events. We can promote um, things all in these different networks, Facebook, social media, etc. But it needs to be more of a marketing funnel, in my experience, to get consistent clients. For so long, I learned all these different tools, and it was like I had 50 tools in my toolbox, and I'd be like, oh, I need a new client. So, um, mm, okay, I'll try a Facebook ad. Bang, you know, throw that at the wall. Does that work? Oh, okay, well, I need a new client. I'll send out a newsletter with an offer. And that's stressful. It really is because you don't know which one's going to work. And in some ways at the beginning you do that to learn the tools. But over time we want you a marketing plan, a marketing funnel, so you know how to take care of your clients, to take them through that process so that they will buy at the end if the program's right for them. And if it's not, you've nurtured them in the best way anyway. Um, and then step five, embrace and enjoy not only the marketing but the selling. Because this is so important. It's like, I'm calling it at the moment like selling with soul. So many healers and health coaches want to make selling bad. And as I've shared a few times, oh, if you don't sell, you're actually harming 
people. Everyone wants to buy a solution for something they're in pain for. Everybody, if they're feeling sick, wants to go buy cough medicine, if that's your belief. You know what I'm saying? Or go buy a vitamin. And if the person was hiding the vitamins behind the shelf and saying, I don't want to sell them to you, you'd be pretty pissed off if there was a solution for you. Most of these people don't know what they're needing. And sometimes in this marketing and selling, it is sell them what they think they need and actually deliver and give them what they want. And this is where I'm working with all my clients at the moment on what I'm calling spiritual maturity in selling. And that is we don't, we might have healthy options, we might have healing options, and sometimes we can get all excited, it's created changes in our life, etc. But that language doesn't necessarily translate to the person who's in pain and who needs it. If you just say, oh, just change your thoughts and you'll be fine, they're just gonna, it'll glaze over, it's not a language that they understand. You need to understand your target market, back to where we started, their language, speak their language, and then give them what they actually need. Um, so look, embracing and enjoying selling, I think this is one of the biggest hurdles uh, that I work with clients on anyway to overcome, because there's so many intricacies in us feeling we can ask for money, us feeling like, who am I to sell? Who am I to, I just want to make a change in the world. Um, but honestly, the people who want to make a change in the world and think that quitting their corporate job and making $10 an hour in a cafe is doing good for the world, um, that's not my belief. My belief is the change you'll make in the world is when you feel fully supported, when you feel alive, and when you have clients coming that are giving you income to increase and expand your own life, your own self-development, your own business to create more change as a result in the world. That is going to inspire people so much more when you're genuinely healthy, you're genuinely lit up, and you're a professional than someone who is struggling in their own life, you know, on some areas to try and do the good thing. Uh, so that's my beliefs. Um, might not be everyone's, but that's definitely, you know, my philosophy on, on how I coach people. Now I can finally get to this chat box. I'm going to start from the beginning. Um, 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 oh, there's lots here. <laughs> How do I get that? Um, Stevie has a question. How did you get clients coming back for more, or were you always targeting new clients? Uh, it's both. It's absolutely both. I Many of my clients last year uh, have signed on again for a six-month program you know, that I'm now offering, and that's because when you're really working with your dream clients and they are getting the results, and you're the right fit, like personality, when you find something that works, I know this from my own mentors, when you find something that works, you stick with it, and you keep going and you max that out, and you know, I believe you always need support. I've always had coaches and mentors right through this process, and I always will continue to. So um, some clients naturally renew, however, you always need to be marketing for new clients, always. Um, even you know, even when I'm sharing at the moment, like there's literally a couple of spots, and at the same time, like in six months, you know, all those people will leave. So you've always got to be thinking ahead, and you've always got to be marketing. But especially at the beginning, um, always targeting more clients. Always. Why wouldn't you? There's no lack of clients. There's no lack of people out there looking for your help. The thing is that they don't know that you exist, or they don't know that you've got an offering to offer them. So this is where the marketing is not slimy or sleazy. It's about you helping others by showing up where they weren't even expecting you. That's always looking for new clients, always targeting, if we want to say, new clients. So I hope that helps. Stevie, thanks for your question. Um, yes, Sophia, I studied my initial health coaching at IIN, and I've also gone on to do transformational coaching as well, which I'm halfway through. And my role, you know, when I work with private clients now, is very much that of a transformational coach. So although I'm bringing all of the business skills to the table, I really look at myself as more of a coach to help you move through the blocks and move through the, the things that are really stopping you from getting this business up and running. Most of the time it's confidence, self-worth, all these kind of things. If we're charging a price that's not aligned with our honest, like where we're like our vibration, our true self-worth, people will feel that and won't buy. And sometimes you can be undercharging and that can actually be the problem. So I work very much 
as a transformational coach as well as teaching, if you like, those business skills and structures to get your business up and running. But yes, that is where I did my health coaching. And I know the um, IIN model very, very well. So um, most of my clients, you know, at least probably 70% of my clients do come through uh, that system first. Uh, what do you call yourself online if not a health coach? It's not... Uh, I had a really in-depth conversation with a client about this. Thank you, Michelle, just a few days ago. Um, it's not so much that you can't call yourself a health coach. Your solution of what you're selling them is not health coaching. It is. Remember what I said before. You sell them what they think they need, and you give them what they actually. Uh, sorry, you sell them what they think they want. You give them what they actually need. So you can be health coaching. You can be a health coach. But when you market, um, think about it for yourself. In a issue that you've had in your health or well-being, would you have been looking for a health coach? Or would you have been looking for, say, someone to help you with your stomach pains or someone to help you with your stress, etc.? Um, I have people quite often, once they get into their unique, unique packages, prices, etc., then decide that they are like a nutrition and lifestyle coach or a mindset and health coach, something to differentiate themselves and tell a little bit more, you know, maybe a mindset and food coach. That uh, you don't have to change from the term health coach. Um, you know, I don't mean to sound confusing in that way. There is nothing at all wrong with the health coaching model. I love it. I'm, this is why I'm so passionate about helping people realize how to really bring it to life and make a change. Health coaching will change the world. Absolutely. It's just talking to people in the language that they understand. I, I hope that helps, Michelle. Um, do I have any tips on how to create and host a workshop? Um, hmm, specifics. Get out there and do it. <laughs> I don't know. I All of these things most of the time, I mean, yes, you've got to know how um, in some ways, but most of the time it's just a mindset thing that I work with people on of realizing that you can be the expert and you can just get out there and do it tomorrow. You've got to know how to market it, yes. Um, but uh, I think back to my first workshop, I, I got a space, I made a few brochures, and I told everybody I knew about it. I don't know. <laughs> if you want to put more specifics maybe of what you're looking for there, I might be able to elaborate. But most of the time I find it's not the, the how as much as, look, I will say if you don't know your target market, what topic would you even uh, put out there and who would you tell about it? But, you know, for me, when I did the first one, I knew that the topic was about stress in the workplace and how to eat healthier. So I put on a healthy high tea um, to talk about those topics uh, in a very luxe setting, but it was with, like, beautiful raw vegan cakes, etc. But I knew that I was talking about corporate, how not to burn out, how to de-stress in that environment, and I reached out to my corporate friends and asked them to invite their friends, etc. So I think the question is more getting in the mindset of who are you talking to, what do they need, and um, you know there might be some logistics about where to hold it, etc. But then it's just marketing it to the right people. So I hope that helps. Why did I cho choose the course I did? I assume you're um, asking me, Stevie, about the initial health coaching course I did. I chose that at the time. I think I shared earlier on the call. I'd had these visions for years that I wanted to be a lifestyle coach. Like I knew I'd been through such a personal journey in my own life of learning um, how health um, had impacted things, mindset, energetic work, all these things. And I just kept getting these visions of helping people, like educate them. No one knew this. I was getting such big changes in my life and it felt like this kind of secret world of what was going on. Um, and so when this coaching course came up and I found it, not only did it talk much more holistically than just the food, I didn't really want to learn the intricacies of nutrition. Um, I think I shared before I didn't want to go to university for that scientific level and I, I still didn't. I wanted to, my beliefs were a much more holistic approach and at the time that course showed up, it was the right one for me, you know, at the time and I was, I just soaked it up. I loved every single moment of that. So that's why I chose the course. Um, and then, as I shared, that was a perfect basis, um, but I did find that to actually get clients from that, I did personally need to add the level that I wanted. Do you know what I mean? It's not that I wasn't getting a few clients straight out from there. I, um, quite honestly, was used to a certain lifestyle, 
And the glamour, if you want to call it that, of, oh, I'm working for myself and freedom lifestyle, became pretty boring when I could no longer eat out or I could no longer travel. And um, I realized I was becoming pretty boring in the process too. Like, I want to inspire people of what they can live in life. So that's why I then went on to choose to do further business courses. So you maybe ask me, ask me again if it was the business ones you wanted to ask me, but to be honest, there's so many. <laughs> this is the problem. There was no course out there for our mentality of people wanting to make change in the health um, coaching industry, etc. So I almost in some ways feel like I sucked it up and went into the deep, dark business world. <laughs> See, I still call it dark after all those years. Um, you know, I went from promoting Coca-Cola to health coaching. <laughs> um, you know, I went out there and I did that and I bought it all back. And I bought it all back and made it real and authentic. And I know the difference. And I've done much more study even, you know, right through to now on how to do that in a very authentic way so that we're creating positive change in the world, not just slapping messages out there at people. Stevie, I hope that answers um, your question. You can always email me if it was more specifics that you were wanting to know. Okay. Um, okay, what steps do you recommend taking if I'm in the first couple of months of a health coach training? I was thinking of just having generic business cards with a business email contact for now so I could give them to people I end up chatting and connecting with now so I can work with them later. Also, is it best to wait and use the school's web template or create one from scratch? I get this question a lot. I'm thank, thank you, Leah, for bringing this up again. Uh, when is the right time to start business coaching? And there's no right answer for everybody. Some people um, working with me, it might be too overwhelming or too stressful depending on your schedule, to get in that business mindset now. However, it takes a few months, you know, to get your business up and running. And some people I'm working with who are literally one or two months into their health coaching training. Um, so there's two ways you can go with this. If you're in no rush, because I don't believe in, you know, pushing life for the sake of it, um, then, yeah, you know, start with some business cards. And most importantly, at that level, Get comfortable talking to people, telling everyone what you're doing. Your passion is what will change the world. Your passion and you walking your talk and stepping into your deeper desires and dreams is what will change the world, not you teaching green vegetables. I can guarantee that. So getting out there and talking to people um, is a great way to start. What I would advise, and I, I totally respect, um, you know, I don't know where you're training, but I respect that everyone has different opinions. In my opinion, I wouldn't waste your time or money, and this is just my opinion, on using the school's template. Um, I would create one from scratch, and I would, if not working with myself, like I understand that that might not be a, a way for you while you're still in the school. If it is, work with someone like myself who can show you how to do that properly, and to be honest, don't waste your time and money doing it any other way. A common question actually that I get with people saying, you know, why would I spend this money coaching with you? I need to spend thousands on a website and thousands on photos, etc. I get people setting up a very highly professional website which has all the things that you need which aren't included in the typical school templates for approximately $200. And people go off and spend thousands on that kind of thing trying to look a certain way or create a facade of what they think will sell that won't sell. You don't need to spend money on that. Spend money on investing um, in your education on what will actually make that business happen. Um, does that help you, Leah? Let me just double check. Look, I, I don't want to say like everybody has to go into business training now. I get it where you're at. Um, I would just say you could use the school's web template. I don't want to put any kind of pressure on you in that way. Um, but personally, just instead of doing that, if you want to do just one other step, just start a WordPress site. Uh, you want a self-hosted WordPress site. Even if you use the free template from WordPress and start learning how WordPress works, you can put in your own graphic header and start doing some blogs. That would be my opinion over spending time setting up the, the school website. I don't know anybody who sticks with that or anybody who that works for long term. Not some, anyone who's in, you know, serious, if you want to say business. So I hope that helps, Leah. Um, Ultimately, if you're still in the first few months and you don't feel this urge to like get it all up and running now, enjoy. Soak up where you're at. You know, like soak up all the modules, get all your um, 
you know, just get into it. Get all the health and the knowledge and, you know, depending where you're at, there's no rush. It just some people know in themselves that they're ready and this is what they need to do. Um, you know, to wrap up on that point, um, there's a last chance now. I'm, I'm happy to sit here if anyone else has got any more questions. Um, on that point, I really want to hone that in. I have the skills, the business program and everything that can help make this happen for you. And I only want to talk to people, like I want to talk to everyone, but I want to have these discovery sessions this week with women who know that they are committed to making it happen for themselves. I will do everything to support you and at the same time, it's not actually my, you're not buying uh, your success from me. You're buying, as such, my support. Um, you're buying the time, the investment, the knowledge, and the personalized way of this, um, excuse me, um, you know, the personalized knowledge for you and your business that will probably save you years and probably save you ten, twenty thousand dollars in the long run of investment in doing that for yourself. Um, that's purely, you know, at the stage who I'm going to talk to. Who knows? Next month I um, might be talking about something else. I'm always in the present moment. I encourage you to be, you know, the same. That's what right now I'm offering and what I'm, you know, what other people are looking to work with me for. And I'm loving the people and the, the program and the pace that I've started working with people in six months. I've also noticed, someone asked about travel. I've also noticed that the six month for me was about getting in reality. I used to do three months and although it was exciting in this momentum, people put so much pressure on themselves that um, they then didn't enjoy it as much. And the reality is that always have to work you know, longer because business goes on forever. So I now like, I know we're busy, I, one of my core values is not burning out as many of you know, uh, having done it professionally before. Um, so now we work at a pace that is consistent and gets momentum and gets results. And at the same time, we take that pressure off. We don't need to be working 50 hours a week to make this happen by any means. So if there's no more questions, I'm so grateful for all of you who did stay on the line, especially because of that um, technical hiccup. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it because it's so special for me to get on here today and just answer all of your questions and, and be here for you. And, and I know that one-on-one -on -one coaching isn't for everyone and I'm so grateful that you will still sit here and put up your hand and ask the questions of me. And if that's where you're at, then max out this opportunity for these webinars. That's, you know, that's fantastic. That's smart. And, you know, I hope to offer another one again next month. If anyone has any thoughts or comments, as you did this time, that brought this one about, I'm thinking it might be on target market and see how much more I can offer on a live call to help you with that. But, yeah, let me, let me know if there's anything personal that I can help you with in that way. Other than that, feel free to email me anything if you're interested in working with me or any questions at all that I might have missed today. It's amanda at fuelurbanwellness.com. Or check out, um, I've got a much more extensive detail of my background, the training I've done, um, you know, how I'm helping people, etc. on that coaching page, which is coaching.amandajdaily.com. So thank you all so much for this morning or evening, wherever you are in the world, and I hope that you have a fantastic week. I look forward to connecting with so many more of you soon. Thanks heaps. Bye.